Let's get started. Welcome, everyone. Um, what we're going to talk about for the next little bit is actually something most people don't think about very much. We kind of take it for granted. And it's soils and soil biology. And I'm, I'm a soil biologist, and a lot of people are like, well, what is that? Why on earth would anybody study that? It's just dirt, right? But what I really hope that I can convince you throughout this semester is, in fact, that soil and the organisms that are in it actually allow life on this planet to exist. And they regulate life as we know it. And, and that might seem like a really far-fetched claim. And I'm sure I'm already seeing kind of faces like, oh, yeah, right. But in fact, it is absolutely true. And um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about about why, why I would make such a crazy claim. So first of all, the organisms that live in the soil include things like bugs, right, insects, bacteria, and fungi. Anyone ever seen Bugs Life? Right, yeah, that's one of our main things we think about when we see, we think about the soil and the things living in it. But in fact, actually, the bacteria and the fungi are even more important than some of the things we saw in Bugs Life, and we didn't see those in Ants or Bugs Life or some of the other movies. But one of the reasons they're absolutely critical is because they're responsible for cycling nutrients, and nutrients are what allow plants to grow, right? So part one of why they're critical for life as we know it on the planet is without soil, plant life wouldn't exist very well at all. So that's a really critical function that soils and soil organisms play. The second thing that we don't think about a lot is the soil organisms are, are responsible for creating new antibiotics. They're in fact responsible for creating antibiotics at all. Um, most people don't know that, but the first soil science, and, and hopefully not the only soil science Nobel Prize ever won, was for someone named Salman Voxman who discovered streptomycin and some of the other critical antibiotics. And what's neat about that actually is the reason why the organisms make antibiotics in the soil is because they're interacting with each other and they're competing and they're growing and they're living. And so bacteria make antifungals to compete with fungi and fungi make antibacterials to compete with the bacteria. So they make novel antibiotics, they cycle nutrients so plants can grow, and then finally, the thing that actually interests me the most is they're responsible for regulating the climate system in a lot of ways. Now that seems like really far-fetched, like how on earth, we're talking bacteria and fungi here. But in fact, um, they regulate uh, um, carbon storage in the soil. So anyone heard of global warming? <laughs> Yeah, okay, right. Anyone heard of greenhouse gases? Yeah, okay. So global warming we know is happening because of carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere, largely. And what these organisms in the soil are doing when they're living and breathing and growing is actually respiring, a lot of them, carbon dioxide. And the soil itself holds more carbon in it than the atmosphere and the vegetation combined. And as the climate warms, these organisms start respiring more and they start breathing faster. And in fact, they put a lot of that carbon back into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. So if we can understand why they do that and how they interact, we can understand how to have them keep the carbon in the soil instead of blowing it into the atmosphere as CO2. And they also are responsible for other greenhouse gases like methane, heard of methane, right? Cows produce it, we know that. Um, wetlands produce it, and it comes up to 40% of the methane that's put into the atmosphere comes from bacteria. The bacteria make methane, and bacteria also make nitrous oxide, which is a third major greenhouse gas that's, some people think, almost 300 times more powerful as a warming gas than carbon dioxide is. And it's bacteria in the soil that make nitrous oxide along with cars and automobiles, right? But bacteria are really critical. So essentially, the take home from all of that is that the soil and the organisms in it is absolutely essential for life as we know it because they regulate climate change, they regulate climate processes, they allow the plants to grow that we like to eat. Most of us like to eat plants some of the time. And they also produce novel antibiotics and help with uh, just a wide range of things. So essentially, why soil, why soil biology, why should anybody care, is because if we understand the organisms and the way that they're interacting and growing and behaving in the ground, we have a much better chance of understanding some of the most critical issues that are actually facing us as humans on this planet. Thank you.